Hey, it's Dino, and today I want to talk about RFC 7636. This is uh, an RFC that talks about the proof key for code exchange, which applies in the OAuth2 um, authorization code grant type. And the goal is, of uh, PKCE is to eliminate the risk of interception of the authorization code by some uh, malefactor and then the use of that code in order to get a, a bona fide token. So what PKCE does is it adds a second verifier or second uh, piece of information that only the bona fide client would know uh, to the request to get a token. And we can actually look uh, at the RFC in the um, in the RFC section four talks about the protocol. So basically, the client is responsible for creating a code verifier and a code challenge, uh, and then the client sends the code challenge with the authorization request, which is just defined in um, the the OAuth spec sixty seven forty nine. So really 7636 is just a, an extension of uh, the OAuth2 spec, which is at 6749. Um, so the client sends that challenge to the authorization server along with uh, all the other required parameters for uh, the authorization request. The server returns the code uh, after the user is uh, authenticated and then the client sends the code verifier along with the code in order to get a bona fide token. So the uh, question is, can we do this in Apogee Edge? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. And so what I've done is I've put together a, um, an example API proxy that shows how to do this. Uh, it shows you how to um, verify, uh, uh, receive the challenge, store it, and then verify the challenge um, when the token request is made. So standard OAuth2 uh, authorization code grant API proxy here. It's available on GitHub, and you'll see the link. Uh, I'll attach the link to the video. Um, and also, I built some uh, some tools to kind of help you get started. So let's see. So once you clone the repo, uh, you can go in and npn install. You'll need to uh, install the prerequisites. Uh, and then what we want to do is uh, provision the assets for this thing. And um, uh, let's see, I'll need to specify my, my organization name and my environment. Uh, and what this is going to do is create the API product, the developer, the developer app, the cache, make sure all those things are created with the right settings. Now you can do this manually, but it does take some time and you got to be careful about the settings. Um, but so we'll just run this tool and it should do this um, pretty quick. All right, so we have all that stuff and helpfully it emits some of these things so I can just grab these and even run them, put them into my environment. Um, this is interesting. I need the client ID and the client secret uh, and in order to kick off this, um, this flow. Uh, so Kicking off the flow, I describe in the readme uh, of this repository how to do it uh, and what all the parameters are. Um, but really, uh, there's an easier way, and that is just to use the helper web page. So I've got a web page, and it um, will create the authorize URL uh, automatically for us. So let me paste in the client ID and the client secret. Um, and I'll put that in here. And um, basically, these are all just different parameters that go into the creation of this uh, URL, which is the authorized URL, a standard authorized URL for OAuth2 authorization code grant types, except we've got this additional code challenge parameter, which is what I uh, pasted in. And uh, by the way, this, this code challenge, the, the verifier is just a random string and this web page generates it. And the challenge is just a, a SHA of that. So um, it doesn't really, uh, th this isn't uh, something that, that requires a lot of thought to create, it's just random. Okay, so now that we have the valid URL, what I can do is open that in a new tab 
And what that's doing is kicking off the, uh, the OAuth 2 flow. And it's actually redirecting me to a user uh, authentication experience. So I've got a mock uh, IDP, a mock identity provider set up here. And uh, I'm going to authenticate. And this, this experience is also going to ask me for uh, consent. So the login uh, and consent experience is just sort of built in. This is something that you would probably have to provide if you were doing this yourself. This is just a demonstration. Um, once I consent, uh, what I get is uh, the code. And this is normal uh, OAuth2 uh, authorization code flow. I get that code, and that is exchangeable for uh, the token. So what I can do now is paste in that, that code, and I see uh, the command line that allows me to invoke the token endpoint. Um, and basically, I have to pass in the verifier, that's this thing, from which the challenge was derived, uh, the code that was just returned, uh, and the uh, the client ID and secret embedded in um, in the uh, basic auth header. So now what I can do is invoke this right here uh, from my command line, and it'll invoke that same proxy and obtain the token in response. Okay, so this is the happy path where I sent a good code challenge and and the correct corresponding code verifier. What happens? if I try uh, not the happy path. And let me just show you that. So let's start this again. We'll refresh. What that does is gives me a new verifier. Watch closely if I just refresh this page. Yeah, so I've got a new verifier. And so now what I'm going to do is um, just run that same exercise again. So I'll open up the, the login and consent experience. I'm going to log in again. Uh, consent. And now I have the code. So now suppose that we do not have the... Um, uh, so what we want to do is test the not happy path. And this is the correct verifier, but let's just modify this. Let's just take off this uppercase Z in the beginning. And you'll see that the curl command has been updated, and now we're sending a different verifier. So if I copy that um, and invoke that, in order to exchange the code for a new token, um, I can I see I've got a bad code verifier. So this did not correspond to the challenge that was used originally when we invoked the authorized endpoint. Uh, so you can also uh, trace this as it's happening. So I've got the API proxy loaded here, and I can walk into the trace tab. Uh, start a trace session, and uh, we'll just run that one more time. So I'll refresh. I have a new verifier. I have a new challenge. Uh, we'll open this in a new tab. Again, I get redirected into the login and consent experience. And by the way, before I uh, log in and consent, let me just show you what has happened already. So uh, the first call was to the authorize endpoint. And that authorized endpoint uh, verifies that um, the client ID is valid and so on. And then if that's valid, it essentially just sends a, a redirect back to this location, which is the location of the user authentication service. Uh, and then the browser opens up uh, this experience. So I'm going through this now. And I'll log in. I'll consent. If I now get a code back, and we'll see that um, this, the most recent transaction was to generate an authorization code. So that API proxy generates the authorization code um, for the, the session that was created with that challenge and, um, that we kicked off earlier. So now I have the code. Um, I got that call back. This is the, the latest code we've got. So let's walk back into the into the web page. Um, we'll paste in the code. I get the curl command. Um, we'll copy that and um, finally exchange the code for a token. Um, you can see once again I've got my access token and um, and then if I look back once more in the trace I can see that request that exchanges the code for a token and it looks up the the challenge and verifier verifies that, and if that's all good, then 
we generate the um, the access token just normal authorization code flow gr um, grant type. Uh, so that's it. That's how you can do PKCE in Apogee Edge today. This all works today, and the repos up here. Um, this is an example proxy. It's not ready for production, but it could be used in uh, could be modified to be used in production. Um, you may be wondering uh, why, if um, if I have everything sort of driven off this web page, I get the, the exchange co uh, code for token. Why do I have to run that from the command line? Uh, I could kick this off from the web browser. Well, this is a GET request, and uh, any browser tab can invoke a GET request with you know all these uh, query parameters. This one, you'll notice, is a POST, and because of that, it's... It, the browser is limited from doing posts by the um, by cores, um, by the cross-origin request uh, sharing thing. So uh, the browser won't be able to make a post call back to this if it's a non-origin, uh, if it's not the same as the origin server. And you can see this is going to um, my Apogee Edge endpoint, and the web page itself is not hosted on Apogee Edge. It's hosted elsewhere. So cores will be in, in effect, uh, and that's why I had to run the, the, this final post request from the command line. Okay, that's it. Um, any questions, uh, let me know on community. Hope this is helpful. Uh, take care.